In March 1985, an energetic new leader took power in the Kremlin. As Mikhail Gorbachev met crowds of Russians on tours around the country, opposition to the war could finally be expressed in public. Thousands of protest letters poured into Gorbachev's office each week. We had to finish this war, but in such a way that the Russian people would understand why tens of thousands had died and tens of thousands had become invalids. We had to explain what it was all for. We couldn't just run away from there in shame, no. We needed to find a process. There was an obstacle, an ideological one. It was our Vietnam syndrome. It was impossible for a great superpower to run away from this wild country, like the Americans in Vietnam. It would damage our prestige. The United Nations envoy, Diego Cordoves, was told by Gorbachev that the Soviet Union would consider withdrawing under a UN agreement. The emerging issue was what kind of government would run Afghanistan if the Soviets left. Hoping the US and Pakistan would accept a coalition friendly to Moscow, Gorbachev chose a new Afghan leader, Mohammad Najibullah. Gorbachev instructed Najibullah to offer talks with the Mujahideen about forming an Afghan government of national reconciliation. Gorbachev and his peace initiatives were applauded in Moscow, but not yet accepted in Washington. He was KGB and he was all of the old school and he had uh, some very dubious associations and, and all the rest. He was trying to persuade the old line communists that he was with them and he would appoint them to various positions and he would not make major changes in the economy or in the economic policies or in the military policies. On return from his first summit with Gorbachev, Reagan sensed Moscow wanted a deal to get out of Afghanistan. But American hardliners wanted revenge for Vietnam. Pressed by Congress, Reagan urged the Mujahideen to go for victory. It wasn't until really between about 83 to 85 that the forces in Washington who asked the question, well, maybe we can win this. Let's not put in $100 million a year worth of weapons. Let's put in a billion dollars worth a year worth of weapons. To combat Soviet air supremacy, the United States decided to try out its latest missile, the Stinger. Field trials like this looked impressive as the shoulder-fired missile locked onto its target. By sending state-of-the-art American-made stingers to the Mujahideen, Washington was making plain that America was directly involved in the Afghan war. Spurred on by the increased American aid, the Mujahideen opposed a UN-brokered peace agreement that would enable the withdrawal of Soviet troops, but leave the Kabul regime in place. Signed in Geneva, the 1988 peace agreement barred further military aid to either side in Afghanistan. Both superpowers ignored the ban. The supply of weapons went on. The Geneva Accords did not bring peace. Our basic feeling was that uh, what the Russians were talking about was a way to, uh, uh, with, to get the, the resistance uh, and the opposition of the West uh, 
uh, off their back, so to speak, and, and uh, that, that they then would be free to pursue other methods of dominating Afghanistan, and that's what we did not want to have happen. The Americans didn't want a trace of Marxism left. They wanted to install an anti-Soviet puppet regime they could control. The bleeders, or the hawks, finally won. Our reason was very simple. If you carry on giving aid, we'll carry on giving aid. In 1988, under the terms of the Geneva Agreement, Soviet troops started pulling out. But instead of peace, Afghanistan was to endure more years of bloodshed. Fighting among rival groups of Islamic fundamentalists continued to destroy the country long after the Cold War was over. Since 1979, five million Afghans were wounded or forced to flee their homes. Almost 15,000 Soviet soldiers were killed. One million Afghans perished. I haven't had a bad night. It's not because I'm without feeling for, you know, or without understanding of how much agony goes along with war. It's just that this was such a contribution to the end of what was otherwise an evil that that inflicted other kinds of pain on so many other people that, on balance, it was worth it. The Afghan people have become the main victims. The Afghans are now fighting each other. Of course, they have plenty of internal reasons for that. But at the same time, it's because of a legacy which started in the 1970s that they are now fighting each other with American and Soviet weapons.